you know, and even in this time that we're living in, um, as you know, I mean, there's a fear epidemic that's been released. Now, I'm not opposed to wisdom, doctors, you know, but he, Jesus died on the cross for me. And, and I'm going to listen and do my due diligence, wash your hands, you know, do your thing. However, Jesus is the great I am. That's what he kept saying to me. I woke up last night around 2.30, and he said, I want you to get up and pray. And I'm like, 2.30, you couldn't tell me at 10? So at 2.30, you know, I'm praying and praying, and I said, Lord, I said, should we, I mean, you know, this is a big responsibility. Should we move on? Should we still have service? I mean, you know, we'll still reach out to the people. He said, I am the great I am, and I am that I am. And that's all I kept hearing, and I thought, okay. And so, um, you know, God has done amazing, amazing miracles. And I was pondering last night when I was thinking about, uh, and you all have heard the testimony 8,000 times, but when the doctors told me that my son was dead in my womb, and, and had we not, had, you know, us not been united in our faith, but also meditating on the word. He gave me a strategy. He said, meditate on the word day and night, speak the word, decree the word. Like I said, I didn't think anything was going to happen that was going to go wrong. I didn't even think I was going to have labor pains, but that didn't happen. But, um, but, you know, when the doctor said this and this and this, and I don't believe that they made it up. They were going by what they saw. When the doctor said, what they saw, the Lord said, I have final say. And it's by faith. And so today what I'm going to talk about is establishing our faith because like uh, Linnell prayed earlier, when he's in Luke 18, it says, when I come back on this earth, will I find faith? So when the Lord was speaking to me about preparing ourselves for what's ahead, that's all right. When, when the Lord was saying, preparing ourselves for what's ahead, it's preparing our faith, getting rid of the, the junk. You know, a, a word was released from Janet about the bitter heart and, and the unbelief and, you know, whatever is there. We're all at different places in the Lord. And I thank God for his grace and his mercy. But what his word to us today is don't stay where you're at. Move on. We all have to keep on moving. He says, come on, let us go over to the other side. But there was opposition before they got to the other side. So we have to know that God is saying to us, get in your spiritual boot camp. Work your body out. Work your spiritual self up and out. That you're not in this place of fear. That you're not in a place of unbelief or challenging God. You know, I, God has final say. So, and again, hear what I'm saying. I'm not opposed to any washing of your hands, restrictions. You know, I get all that stuff. But again, you know, the, the word of God has final say in my life. End of conversation. So, and we're in the month of Adar, you know, and this is Purim. And this is the time of, of Esther. In the book of Esther, when Esther had to overcome Haman. And so, there, this virus to me is like Haman. This virus is trying to take us out, but the very thing that's trying to take us out through our faith, we're going to turn this yeah. thing around. Yeah. And, and it really is by faith. With President Trump calling Sunday a national day of prayer, that is huge. That is the greatest weaponry that we can ever have because prayer changes things. He's the God. We sang it all day today. He's the God of the miraculous. He's the God of the supernatural. Do we believe it or we don't? The fact that we're all here, he's the God of the miraculous. The fact that he's healed our heart, turned our lives around, he's the God of the miraculous. Some of us should be dead right now. He's the God of the miraculous. Amen. So, you know, this season, what, what this represents, it's um, from 5780 in Hebraic, uh, meaning of Adar is laughter and laughter is good medicine yeah. right and so we choose to rejoice and it's when our true identity and gifts will be reflected spiritually as well as physically it's a time to over this is what this month represents it's a time to overturn worry yeah. Yeah. hello you think like God knew about this he's saying a time to overturn, overturn worry and guard yourself from idolatry it's a time for decrees set against us to be broken. Yeah. We're going to reverse. We've been praying that reverse what's been released against him. And so uh, all kinds of depression and despair, God wants to, you know, overthrow. And so that's what this month represents. So as I was pondering what to say, 
the Lord uh, was speaking to me at about his peace. And he said, I want you to entitle the message Victorious Faith. So you can go to the first slide of Isaiah 26, 3 through 5. See, we're not going to allow the giants in the land produce fear in our lives. And it's a really important that we recognize where are we at in our faith walk. And again, it's not a condemning word. It's just check out where you're at. And so I know where I'm at and I know where I have weaknesses and where I want to move on. And I know where I feel I'm pretty strengthened. But, you know, I just always want to keep moving. You know, the glory cloud was always moving. We don't ever want to be stagnant. Amen. So this scripture, which I love, and I'm going to, I have it in a couple of different versions because I want you to get the message. In, in Isaiah 26, 3 through 5, it says, Perfect, absolute peace surrounds those whose imaginations are consumed with you. They confidently trust in you. Yes, trust in the Lord Yahweh forever and ever, for Yah, the God, Lord God, is your rock of ages. Now, I love that because what's your imagination saying to you? Right? What What do you focus on? You know, the media, you know, the media's gone crazy. And, and the media has released a, a fear frenzy. They really have. And, um, you know, and again, you know, yes, do we want to be informed? Absolutely. But I'm sorry, they're not going to dictate my emotional response and how I'm going to walk in this season. I still have to go back to the rock who is higher than I and keep my eyes fixed upon the Lord. Because I don't know about you, but, you know, I think most of us have experienced fear and worry, right? Because there's over 365 scriptures on that. So the Lord knows that we needed one for each day. And the Lord knows that that is something that the enemy loves to target us with. And it gets us and he tries to ambush us. And I hate being ambushed. And I've been ambushed in my walk many, many times where I totally like freaked out. But God. And so, but he met me where I was at. He didn't, you know, kick me aside and say, what's your problem, girl? You know, when are you going to get this thing down? No. He met me where I was at. And I said, Lord, I don't want to be ambushed. I don't want this thing to overtake me because if greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world, then I need to be walking over and overcoming what the enemies release against me. But that comes through our sacrifice and our spending time in the Lord. And we're going to review that a little bit. Um, in Colossians, the next one, I thought I, 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 de I decided to not give you all the different versions. But, all right, in, in Colossians 3.15, it says, Let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which you were also called in one body, and be thankful. Let the peace of God. Let's go to the next one in the Amplified. It says, Let the peace, soul harmony, which comes from Christ's rule, let this peace act as an umpire continually in your heart deciding and settling with finality all questions that arise in your mind in that peaceful state to which as members of Christ, one body, you were also called to live and be thankful, appreciative, giving praise to God always. See, peace has to be the umpire in our life. Peace calls the shot, not fear, not fright, not worry. Peace calls the shot because the, one of the names of God, one of the redemptive names of God is Jehovah Shalom that he is the God of all peace, and I'm one with the God of peace, and that it says in Romans that the God of peace will crush Satan under our feet shortly. Amen? Well, how do we get there? And we're going to talk about that. But see, I love that. He says, let peace, my supernatural peace, be that umpire. Don't you think it, it's a, a strategy from the enemy to get us all freaked out? And all we're all, well, here's what the media is saying. Well, here's what God's word is saying. Here's what the word is saying. Let's focus on that, not freak out. Yes, do we use precautions? But here's what the word of God says. But they mock. Uh, we've been mocked this week and laughed at. But see, that's not my problem. You know, that's their problem. My problem is honoring God. And so the Lord wants us to know that he is the God. He's the author of peace. So now that word peace there, I think it's on the next slide. Okay. It means exemption from the rage and havoc of war, harmony, security, a tranquil state of soul in this particular scripture. 
So the Lord is saying to me, keep your eyes saying us fix on me. He says, I want to keep that exemption of rage and freaking out and havoc of war, war in our flesh, war saying that you're going to die, war saying you're going to get this disease or your, your finances. Let's look at finances, people with businesses that are freaking out, right? So that word rule is uh, I don't know how to say it, but it means to govern, umpire. Basically, what it said in the Amplified, we are allowed, we are to allow the peace of God govern our decision. Or do you have peace with your decision? There are times in my life that my knees have been knocking, but I had a peace inside. Did that ever happen to you? Where you know it's like, I don't get it, man, but I am, I got this peace, but I'm scared. That doesn't mean you're not walking in faith. That's what happens a lot of times, but you know that you're developing that, that walk with Christ where he is strengthening our hearts. I was thinking of uh, the 10 plagues, right, in Exodus. Look at what they had to go through. I said, Lord, I'm glad I'm living in my day and age. But they had to deal with all the bugs and, and, and all those things, all the different plagues, you know. But they had to trust God, and they were deity. They were demonic gods that they worshipped. This virus is a demon that's been released against the nations. And here, they, what, cut, what protected them was the blood of Jesus. They had on their doorposts, on the doorposts of our heart, knowing that he is the great I am. And it is because of the power of the blood of Jesus, him dying, the sprinkling, the Bible says in Hebrews, the sprinkling of his blood that sanctifies us as we repent. See, God's not saying to us, listen, it's your problem here on earth. No, he's given us tools and weaponry. He wants us to operate in fear and worry. And the Lord's saying, keep your eyes on me. That's a strategy. Worship, humble yourself, pray. It's not about going to 14 meetings. What it is, is are you developing your own prayer walk with God? Your own love walk with him? That's, that's the, he says, you know, he that dwells in the secret place. Not just, you know, is there here every now and then. He that dwells in the secret place in the Most High. Your abiding presence in him. So, the next scripture. This is so good. Philippians 4, 6 through 7. says, be anxious for nothing. Nada. Nand. Nothing. Okay? That means nothing. No thing. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and minds through Christ Jesus. Now, it says be anxious for nothing. Do you not think he knew about this plague? Right? He knows what he was doing. He died. He, he's creator God. He's Elohim. He knew this. He knows the end from the beginning, the beginning from the end. Be anxious for nothing. Not your money. Not your house, not your health, not your kids. Be anxious for nothing but in everything. So let me read it to you out of the other version. In the Amplified, do not be anxious or worried about anything, but in everything, every circumstance and situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, continue to make your specific requests known to God. All right, he's saying don't be anxious, but pray. Have a heart of gratefulness and thank God. Say, Lord, I know you've got this. I know, Lord, I'm choosing to trust you with all my heart. Listen, and then the peace of God, that peace which reassures the heart, that peace which transcends all understanding, that peace which stands guard over your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus is yours. Isn't that good? That peace, it assures us. But listen to what this definition of peace is. Love this. It means to prevent a hostile invasion. I mean, you think like that's what's happening? There's a hostile invasion happening that's coming against our faith and our belief in what we stand for? This hostile invasion's under my feet. The Bible says that we don't have to submit to this. It says here that it's protected by a military guard. Who's that? Holy Spirit either to prevent a hostile invasion or to keep the inhabitants of a besieged city from flight. This is from the concordance, okay? To be a watcher in advance. Well, the Lord was speaking to us about getting prepared, getting prepared with our faith walk, to hem in, He's to protect. This is what this supernatural peace does. When we choose not to respond in faith, that mindset locks us into a natural mindset, natural limitations. God says, listen, this supernatural peace is such a powerful weapon 
that the enemy hates it. So do you think he has a strategy to get us out of peace and enter into total turmoil of fear and anxiety because he knows it can kick your behinds and my behind. It's like, no, Lord, you have peace. There's a supernatural peace. We're like in this invisible bubble. My niece just came back from Iceland. They were only there a day because they had to come back because of the travel ban. But they have this, um, uh, it's uh, like an invisible, it's called a bubble where they sleep. And it's a glass bubble, which I would hate because everybody can look in and see you sleeping. Anyway, but that's how it is spiritually. We have this invisible protection, this guard around us, protecting us. He that dwells in the secret place in the most high. The Lord is saying, you were protected by me. Choose to trust me even if you're afraid. Choose to worship me. Choose to decree my word. See, that's the power. That's how God has built our faith up. That's the strategy, what he wants us to do. Not keep listening and focus on what's the wrong thing. I've told you that when I was battling with these darn panic attacks. I was like, Lord, I can't take this anymore. And I'm quoting the scripture and I'm quoting and I'm praying and I'm renouncing, I'm repenting. And I'm like, oh, and I was still battling, you know, and, but it was a consistency. It was that persistence and pressing through. And it is a spirit, which we'll deal with in a minute. But I, I mean, I was dealing everything I know to do. And it was this particular day that Reverend Schambach was still alive. And it was on the radio. And he's like, I turned the radio on and it scared me. <laughs> he said, stop fearing. And I mean, I jumped. And I'm like, who's this guy? And so, but, but it was the Lord saying to me, stop it. He said, you keep focusing on everything that's wrong. You know, my husband was three minutes late. Oh, my God. Where is he? I wasn't concerned that he was doing anything wrong. It was the enemy was lying to me that something happened to him. Calamity. Calamity and this fear thing was overwhelming. And I had to just press through. And I said, Lord, I choose to align with you. I choose to align with your word. I choose to renounce the spirit of fear. I choose to renounce the lie that says fear is greater than you. He's the great I am. And Lord, I need that supernatural peace. I need that peace in the midst of turmoil. I have peace. I have peace about what's happening. I, have pe I know God has us. God loves his people. He says no weapon that is formed against us will prosper. He's got us. He's protecting us. Amen? So now we have here 2 Timothy 1.7. It says, for God did not give us a spirit of timidity, of cowardice, of craving and cringing and fawning fear, but he has given us a spirit of power. That word power is dunamis, dynamite, miracle working power of power, of love, of his love and of calm and well-balanced mind and disciplined self-control. He's saying, listen. That's not your portion because Timothy at that time was dealing with crazy Nero who was killing all the Christians. And really, he had a reason to be afraid. I don't know about you, but I wouldn't have liked living then either. You have Nero's killing everybody. And Paul admonished him and said, listen, now's not the time to give in to this fear. He's not giving you that spirit of fear, but a power. You have dunamis, miraculous power because of my spirit in you. We all have this. This isn't for a certain group of people. This is if you're a child of the Christ, this is it. But he wants us to develop it. Spirit of power, love, the love of God, and a sound mind. And listen to what Rick Renner says. I, I read this when I was in Texas. I love this. Now, sound mind. The phrase is taken from the Greek word sophronio, which is a compound word combining sozo and phrenoa, phrenea. The Greek word sozizo means to be saved or delivered. It suggests something that is delivered, rescued, yeah. revived, salvaged, protected, and is now safe and secure. All right, that's the portion of that word. All right, now listen to the rest. It says, one expository suggests that that word, salzo, could actually depict a person who was on the verge of death, but then was revived and resuscitated because new life was breathed into him. We were singing about the breath of God today. We have the breath of God within us. We are revived and we are resuscitated. The second part of the phrase, sound mind, listen to this. 
We have a sound mind. We're not a crazy person. We have a sound mind. Comes from the Greek word for neo, which carries the idea of a person's intelligence or total frame of thinking, including his rationale, logic, and emotions. The word for neo refers to every part of the human mind, including all the processes that are engaged in making the mind function and come to conclusion. Next slide. When the words sozo and phreneo are compounded into one word, they form the word sophreneo. Now listen to this. I love this. Which pictures a mind that has been delivered, rescued, revived, salvaged, protected, and is now safe and secure. Thus, even if your mind is tempted to succumb to fear, as was in the case with Timothy, you can allow God's word and the Holy Spirit to work in you to deliver, to rescue, to revive, and salvage your mind. This means, isn't that good? This means your rationale, logic, and emotions can be shielded from the illogical, absurd, ridiculous, unfounded, and crazy thoughts that have tried to grip your mind in the past. All you have to do is grab hold of the Word and His Spirit. So, listen to the way He translates the Scripture. So in First Timothy, uh, Second Timothy one seven, it says, "God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of power and of love. He's given you a mind that has been delivered, has been, not going to be, has been <laughs> delivered, rescued, revived, salvaged, protected, brought into the place of safety and security, so that it is no longer affected by illogical and unfounded and absurd thoughts." Amen. I'm telling you, this is what the enemy does to our mind. Oh, don't be ridiculous. You need to be logical and use wisdom. Amen. He's the author of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, not the fear of man. The fear of the Lord. Lord, what is your wisdom? How are you directing us? You see, the word has to, you have to become so one with the word where no matter what, the word has final say, not what your thoughts says, not what so-and-so says, not what the government says, not what Governor Murphy says. The word of God in your life has to become one. Now, you might say, well, that's so crazy. You're so radical. Yeah, I am, because that's what's brought me through. That's what's enabled me to have the overcoming miracle-working power where our son was diagnosed that he was dead and he's alive. He's 30 years old. Don't tell me. The different situations of finances where God has come through. Don't tell me that God isn't real. If I were to have listened to the doctors, my son would be dead. That's what they said. So God has final say. He's the great I am. He's the one that offers the miraculous. He's saying, come up higher. Stop limiting your mindsets. Come up higher. Believe me, he's bringing the church to a whole nother level. He's saying, you cannot stay where you're at. I can't stay where I'm at. I don't want to stay where I'm at. I said, Lord, he said, it's not out of works. It's out of my relationship with you because I love you so much. He loves us so much. He's saying, stop limiting me. In Psalms 76, it says that we have limited the Holy One of Israel because of unbelief. What's the unbelief in your heart? I said, Lord, just keep showing me. Show me where I'm at. I'm not going to act like I'm holier than thou. Show me where I'm at. I don't want to be that one that, that, that thinks I'm going one way and I'm going a, down a whole different path that I shouldn't be on. See, Jesus never asked us to be lukewarm. If you're hot or if you're cold, he said, but if you're lukewarm, I'll spew you out of my mouth. He said, I'll vomit you out, actually. You know, God's not so politically correct like we try to make everything else to be because he loves us too much. He wants us to live a life of abundance and breakthrough. But we have to do it his way. We can't be compromising. We can't tell him how it's going to work. We have to say, Lord, it's your way. Lord, I'm going to keep my eyes fixed on you. Yeah, I'm radical because God's been radical with me because God has asked me to consecrate my life and surrender because, believe me, I couldn't be bothered with this, honestly. Had God not shown himself strong on my behalf, had God not, I was the one running and he grabbed, he got a hold of me. I would not be here. I, I was an atheist. I couldn't be bothered with this stuff. God had to make himself real. And that's the beauty of God. He makes himself so personal to each and every one of us here. Amen. Amen. Hebrews 3.12 in, in the Passion says, 
So search your heart. Yes, thank you. <laughs> I'm like, where am I? So search your heart every day, every day, my brothers and sisters, and make sure that none of you have evil or unbelief hiding within your heart, within you, for it will lead you astray and make you unresponsive to the living God. So can we just put our hands on our heart right now? Say, ask the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, would you just show us our hearts? Lord, is there unbelief? And help us to uproot the unbelief. Forgive us for doubting your word, for walking in fear, for unbelief. Lord, we choose to honor you, fear your name, and believe you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Listen to this scripture. In Isaiah 31 in the Amplified, verse 1, Woe to those who go down to Egypt for help, who rely on horses and trust in chariots because there are many, and in horsemen because they're very strong. But they look not to the Holy One of Israel, nor seek and consult the Lord. So that's really important. Again, I'm not denying, I'm not saying anything's wrong with going to a doctor. I go to a doctor. I, I think we should do all that stuff. So that's not what I'm saying. But I'm going to consult with God. Yeah. And, and he's going to have final say. So, which brings me, everybody alive? We're good? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Amen. So, uh, which brings me to Psalm 91. And I just, I mean, I think we all need to be... Uh, meditating in that psalm, speaking it every single day over your life. Every single, we speak it all the time over our family, over our lives, over the church, over the people here. I, you know, I decree Psalm 91. We've been in some crazy situations. Psalm 91, Lord, he that dwells in the secret place. But it's not a rabbit's foot, I'm just saying. It's a relationship with God. So it says here, which verse? Okay, in the Amplified. He who dwells dwells, doesn't visit. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall remain. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm reading. I'm not? Oh, you know what? That's the passion. That's your fault. Sorry. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> he, did this, he did the slides for me. Okay. Love you anyway. All right. <laughs> when you sit enthroned under the shadow of Shaddai, you are hidden in the strength of God Most High. All right. Now, the Amplified, the correct way I had it really, says, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall remain stable and fixed under the shadow of the Almighty. Listen to this. Whose power no foe can withstand. But see, here's the key. He who dwells. And so this is what the Spirit of the Lord has been saying to us. This isn't anything new for any of us here. We've been around the block and then some. But we have to abide in that presence, in his presence all day. It doesn't mean you have to stay in your, your, your prayer room all day. You can be talking to the Lord all day long. I do. You can be praying in the Spirit all day, worshiping all day. I wake up, you know, all week I kept hearing that he is the God of the breakthrough. I love that song, Eddie James. But he's the God of the breakthrough, you know. I'm like, Lord, I know what they're saying. I bless them. And you know what? Let's pray for the doctor. We're going to pray when we end here for the doctor. Oh, that's my phone ringing. <laughs> that's a great song. Anyway, but let's pray for the doctors and the nurses for the medical team, for the EMT services, for everybody that's uh, really trying to help people. My Lord, the police officers, you know. I'm, that's I've been praying for them all week because the pressure that's on them. And they're servants of Christ. So just a separate note, but let, we'll pray for them in a bit. But anyway, we have to uh, have a dwelling place. God, it's, it's not even so much that it's a room. It's a spiritual dimension that the Holy Spirit wants to bring us into. He's saying, come on. Practice hearing his voice. Just even, listen, God meets us right where we're at. Let's say you haven't really been doing it. Just start. Yeah. Five, ten minutes, just start. And then it progresses from there. Yeah. And that you just, you long to be in his presence. You don't want to miss out yeah. from being in his presence. Because there have been times I have woke up, awakened, not woke up, awakened, 
with such agita, you know, the times we get like that, ooh, just not like, Lord, what is my problem? I'll get in the press, and sometimes I just don't know what it is. And I just start worshiping and praying in the spirit. By the time I'm done, it's gone. I don't even know what, what happened. But see, that's the beauty. That's, that's that spiritual drug that's free. See, we have, like my husband says, we have that unfair advantage. It's free. But we have to press in. It's a privilege that we all have. I can't do that part for you. We can pray, and there's a corporate anointing that you can't get when you're alone, but that alone time comes between you and God. I, we can't do that for you. That's a privilege we all have. So it says here, so we have to dwell in this place, and I can't emphasize that enough. We have to renew our love walk with him. We have got to. And, and again, God's not beating anybody up over the head. He's saying, listen, I just love you so much and i just want that that time renewed with you see worship and prayer is the most powerful weapon against the enemy because see god is a spirit if we're going to try to logically understand god you're going to have a problem understanding him because it's spirit to spirit that's why prayer and worship is in, in meditating on the word is so important because we can't logically understand what what the lord it doesn't make sense right Oh, forgive those who hate you. Oh, that doesn't make sense to me. You know, you have to walk in love to those who despitefully use you. That doesn't make sense to me. Right? You don't want to do that. You want to give one of those things. Tell them to take a hike. You don't want, you, you know, you see, and that's what the Lord is saying. My ways are not your ways. My thoughts are above your thoughts. Thankfully. Because he's got a strategy that doesn't make sense. And that strategy is what causes breakthrough. So who am I to just decide and pick and choose what I want to do? No, I'm going to choose to obey the word of the Lord because I want breakthrough. Do you want breakthrough? You want to keep going around that same mountain over and over again. I'm tired of that mountain. I want breakthrough. And so the Lord is saying to us, obey me. In areas, go back. If you've been stagnant and you haven't experienced breakthrough, where have made, maybe you've disobeyed God. Right? I mean, I, one time the Lord said to me, it was a couple years ago, and he said, uh, he said you're going to have a little problem here. And um, he said, because you made a vow to a certain ministry and you never paid up. I paid half. <laughs> I thought, well, I, don't know. I said, I'm moving on. He said, no, you made a vow. You have to pay up. And I did. And breakthrough came. You know, so listen. I would have just said, Trisha, don't worry about it. <laughs> just keep moving on. He said, no, pay up. So, you see, we have to understand God's ways. Forgiveness is key. That's God's way, right? Honoring the Lord with our tithes. That's another way of breakthrough. Honoring God in our walk with him, obeying the word no matter what is breakthrough. All right, so we can continue, and it says, I will save the Lord that he is my refuge, my fortress, my God. On him I lean and rely, and in him I confidently trust. I'm, not, I'm leaning and relying upon him. We're going to go over some of his names, the four names of God that's here. But I'm relying upon him, not media. I'm relying upon him. He has final say. It says, for then, listen, I, he's, listen, for then he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. Let's go back to verse 2. Lord, you're my refuge. I trust you. You're my fortress. Remember, all of this is by faith. Okay? It's by faith. I will lean and rely upon you, and I choose to trust in you. Meditate on Proverbs 3. Lord, I choose to trust in you with all my heart. Lean not on my own understanding. In all my ways, I acknowledge you, and you will direct my path. Lord, I choose to lean on you. Lord, I don't understand this, but I choose to lean on you. And then he starts giving us direction. Then he will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings shall you trust and find refuge. His truth and his faithfulness are a shield and a buckler. His truth, his truth and his faithfulness. See, when you know the truth, you're like, God's got this. No weapon formed against me is going to prosper. God's got this. You shall not be afraid of the terror of the night, nor of the arrow, the evil plots and slanders of the wicked that fly by day. You don't think that you get nervous? You don't think Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego got nervous when they were thrown into the fire, but they said, we will not bow our knee to you. No matter what, we're going to trust you, God. But guess what? There was a fourth man in the fire that they found because he, they chose to trust God. 
Would we trust God in that? The government saying you bow to fear. You bow to that virus. He's saying, that's saying we're not trusting. We're going to trust in the delivering power of God. And, and they threw him into the furnace. Well, we're getting thrown into the furnace. President Trump is getting thrown into the furnace because of his position, his stance. But see, the Lord is saying, trust me because I've got your back. And, and, and you know, this isn't a lot of hype. I mean, we have... Those of us, I mean, we all can come up here and give testimony of how God has delivered us Amen. and how God has broken through, how God has opened up doors that no man can open, Amen. where God just miraculously supplied finances, where God miraculously healed us. You know, we heard testimony or two weeks ago where she had, um, Rachel had some disease where they thought she had a tumor in her brain. She's totally healed. That's God. The doctor said it was a miracle. So it says here, I'll read it again. You will not be afraid of the terror of the night, nor of the arrow, the evil plots and slanders of the wicked that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor of the destruction and sudden death that surprise and lay waste at noonday, or of sudden death that's... Oh, <laughs> well, that bears repeating. I'm going to read it again. Sudden death that surprise and lay waste at noonday, because that, everyone's getting scared about death, of dying. A, a thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. It will not come near you. You need to make that decree. It will not come near me. I apply the boundary of the blood around my household, around our properties. Only a spectator shall you be yourself inaccessible in a secret place in the Most High as you witness the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord your refuge, the Most High your dwelling place, there shall no evil before you, nor any plague, nor any plague, nor any plague, or calamity come near your tent. For he will give his angels a special charge over you to accompany and defend and preserve you in all your ways of obedience and service. They shall bear you up on their hands, lest you dash your foot against a stone, and you shall tread upon the lion and the adder, and the young lion and the serpent shall you trample underfoot. See, he will deliver us because we set our love upon him. And then in verse 14, it says, he has, Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he knows and understands my name. You know his character. You know the goodness of our God. My name, it says, my name has a personal knowledge of my mercy, my love and kindness, trust and relies on me, knowing I will never forsake him. No, never, never. When you know who God is and his amazing love for us, he doesn't forsake us. It says, he shall call upon me and I will answer him. Not maybe, not only a certain group of people. He says, oh, you call on me, I'll answer you. And I will be with you in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. And with a long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Long life. See, we need to be decreeing that. We need to speak the word of God, not what the world is saying. With a long life. When... um. What's his name? John, John Osteen's mother. She was given six weeks to live. She decreed the word of the Lord. It's 25 years later with a long life. Lord, here's your word. There's warfare. Don't tell me there's no warfare. This is warfare. Oh, we don't war. Yeah, we do. We're taking a stand for the Lord. This is warfare. But God. So now in Psalm 91, listen, we have to know. There's an accuser of the brethren. That's in Revelation. But the Bible says we overcome through the blood of the Lamb, through the word of our testimony. But we have the Godhead. We have this Father, Son, and Holy Spirit protecting us. And what's really important is that we understand the Father's love. Perfect love, right, casts out all fear. Well, who's perfect love? I've shared this before. I didn't understand. Well, who's perfect love? Duh. God the Father. He loves us. And so if you have an issue with fathers, we're going we're to deal with that right now. Just, just ask the Holy Spirit. Just say, Lord, help me to see Father God as my father. So, Lord, we just pray. Lord, where, where there's been an obstacle, where there's been a block, Lord, help us to, to know the Father's love and that you are wooing us and that you love us with an everlasting love. And that, Father, you're no respecter of persons. You love your children. And, Lord, we choose to receive your love. 
Can you say that? I choose to receive your love in Jesus' name. Perfect love. So when you have an understanding of God's amazing love, just like, you know, um, Megan back there with your kids, right? David uh, Torres, I don't know where he went now, but I'll call him when he's, I'll call him out when he comes back in. Anyway, but, but you love your kids. Your kid, your baby there knows mama is not going to let me drop. There's a mother side of God. There's that El Shaddai, right? That, that, that some people hate when I say, but it's what his definition is, the many-breasted one. You know, he's nurturer. He, he's there to comfort us. You know, we know that, you know, they're protected. So one of the names of God that's in this scripture is when it says, he that dwells in the secret place of the most high. That word, the, the uh, name is El Elyon. Yeah. Most high, and it's really important that we understand these names because this is the character of who he is. The term was used of rulers and monarchs. The psalmist used El Elyon. Well, it just says Elyon, but it's El Elyon to signify the exalted majesty and supremacy of God. Even the absolute greatest rule in all history or the most majestic thing on earth can't compare to the exalted nature of God. He is so far above anything we can ever contemplate. Some scholars refer to this as aspect of God as otherness. God is so beyond all created thing that he is other than us. He is El Elyon, our God most high. That's just El Elyon. The next one is El Shaddai, God Almighty. Shaddai combines the two Hebrew words meaning who and self-sufficient. It's used 48 times in the Old Testament as a title for God and translated as Almighty in English. Our Almighty God is completely self-sufficient. He needs nothing outside himself. He needs nothing from us. And yet Shaddai builds us, bids us to come to him and rest in the shadow of protection. It was first mentioned in Genesis when he approached um, um, Abraham. And he says, is there anything too hard for me? I mean, they were in their 90s, and he was 100, I think, when he said they were going to conceive. He says, is there anything too hard for me? I'm El Shaddai. Yeah. See, God is breaking the barrenness off of our thought processes that has held us back because God is saying, I'm breaking you out to bringing us all into a whole nother level. That's El Shaddai. Oh, Lord, he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty, the one that breaks us through, the one that, that enables us to do the most impossible. That's who we're serving. The next name is, uh, El, I think, is Yahweh. When you see the Lord in all caps in the Old Testament, it's an English translation of the Hebrew word Yahweh or Jehovah. Yahweh is the personal name of God, and the ancient Jews held it in such reverence they dare not speak it aloud, but referred to it simply as the name. Yahweh means the existing one. Jehovah has no beginning and no end. He's eternal. He has no source or cause. He's the source and cause of everything, and he is. He's the great I am. And the fact is both simple and unfathomable. It is glorious and fearsome, Yahweh. That's who Yahweh is, and it's, that's the name you'll see pretty much throughout the gospel. Elohim is the other one, God. Elohim is the plural for El, which is the basic Hebrew word for God. Frequently used in the Bible with singular verb forms, Elohim does not denote multiple gods, but instead is intended to multiply the intensity of God's majesty. Our great El Elohim is high and lofty in his majesty. God, his greatness and his power knows no bound. When you uh, read in Genesis, it says, and God created, that's Elohim. That's that creative miracle working power of God. So those are just some. There's seven redemptive names of God. I mean, when you know that he's our healer, right? He, we have a covenant of healer. He's our deliverance. He's our righteousness. We're in right standing, not because we're so good, but because of the sprinkling of the blood, the power of the blood of Jesus. He's Jehovah Makedesh. That's a word that says he's our sanctifier, that he's with us at all times. You know, he's, he's just a, he's a man of war. He's the Lord God, Jehovah Sabaoth, the Lord God of the angel armies. I mean, you know, we come to him he said like I am who I am he says I am who you need me to be I am the one who will cause you to have that breakthrough he says get your sights on me the miraculous me not on a limitation of what you think or or can even fathom because you can't we can't we have to trust him and we're going to close with this uh, in Psalm 27 this is another one of the scriptures that I had to meditate on and meditate on because of the fears that I've struggled with the Lord is the light of my salvation yeah. Whom shall I fear? 
The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers assail me to eat up my flesh and adversaries and my foes, it is they who stumbled and fell. Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war rise up against me, yet this thing I will be confident of. And then it goes on talking about dwelling in the house of the Lord. But I want to read it to you also out of the Passion. The Lord is my revelation, light to guide me along the way. See, that's what I'm saying. He's not leading, leaving us helpless. He's guiding us. The Lord is my, uh, oh, wait. Okay, he's the source of my salvation to defend me every day. I fear no one. I'll never turn back and run from you, Lord. Surround and protect me. When evil one comes to destroy me, they will be the ones who turn back. My heart will not be afraid, even if an army rises to attack me. I know that you are there for me, so I will not be shaken. Now listen to me. God is there for us. Remember what I said early on. The enemy is after our peace because he knows when we come out of peace, where it's no revelation, right? I think John Paul Jackson said that, uh, um, peace is the potting soil of revelation. Right. It's true. Yeah. When we're in that place of peace, like, Lord, you know, we're worshiping. Lord, I know you've got this. Yeah. Lord, I know we're protected. Yeah. Lord, give me the strategy for my particular situation. Yeah. Show me. Now, the thing is, the enemy will try to get our hearts to have an ugly heart. Start judging, talking against people, having bitterness, unforgiveness. Clean that up. Just yeah. And the Holy Spirit shows us. Yeah. You know, I mean, we're all tempted to get mad at people, but just make it right. That's the cool thing about God. He's not like, you know, like unreachable. He's just like, make it right. I mean, we all know we're not right, right? I mean, right? So anyway, but God is saying to us, it's time for us to see him in a greater way of his goodness, that he is good. That let's, you know, in Psalms it says, oh, come, let us magnify the Lord. Let's not magnify the virus. Let's not magnify what everyone else is saying. Lord, I, I'm here to magnify you. The Lord knew what he was doing when he put that word in the scripture about magnifying the Lord because there's a lot of scary people out there. There's a lot of people that are really, really, really afraid and really have been struggling with this. So let's pray for them, Right. I, I will make, it says here, I'll bless the Lord at all times. His praise, and I'm going to end with this, will continuously be in my mouth. My life makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble and the afflicted hear and be glad. Oh, magnify. Let's make big the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name forever. I saw and inquired of the Lord and required him of necessity and the authority of his word. He heard me and delivered me from what? All my fears. They looked to him and were radiant, and their faces shall never blush for shame or be confused. The poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. And that word there means distress. The angel of the Lord encamps around about those who fear him, not the virus, fear him, who revere and worship him with awe, and each of them he delivers. Oh, taste and see that our Lord God is good. Blessed, happy, and fortunate to be envied is the man who trusts and take refuge in the Lord. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. Revere and worship him, for there is no want to those who truly live, revere and worship him with godly fear. Amen. And then two more verses. The young lions lack food and suffer hunger, but they who seek, inquire of, require the Lord by the right of their need and on the authority of his word, none of them shall lack any beneficial thing. Come, you children, listen to me. I will teach you to revere and worshipfully fear the Lord. Now, one of the things, oh, keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Depart from evil, do good, seek, inquire, and crave peace. Crave it and pursue and go after it. The eyes of the Lord are towards the uncompromisingly righteous and his ears are open to their cry. That's us. Does it mean we're perfect? No, but his ears are open to us. We're like, Lord, we're humbling ourselves. We are crying out to you, Lord. We are asking you for breakthrough. One of the things that the Lord did say to me prophetically, he said, those who are, are trusting in me, he said, in this, this crunch of financial crunch, he says, I'm going to provide for them. And, and it will be a testimony of my goodness. It'll be a testimony that you earn more money now than you did before the crunch. So, Lord, we just are grateful. We are grateful to you. Lord, we thank you that, Lord, 
Your desire for us is to walk in blessing and prosperity. And I don't just mean money. I just mean, you know, emotional health, peace. Lord, we just thank you. I'm going to ask you to stand. And I'm going to pray because if you're really struggling with fear, we're going to take authority over it because it's a spirit. And we're going to bind that spirit and render it ineffective and powerless. But first we have to renounce it. Amen. And we have to put it under our feet where it belongs. And, and you know what? There are times in my walk, I'm saved a long time, and I've had to go through this. There are times that just, uh, just try to grab hold of you and have to, like, no, come out of agreement. If you're battling with fear, say no to it, number one. Number two, get the scriptures. And we're going to pray, and I'll show you how to do it. But renounce it. And don't entertain it because it, it, it's shot out like any kind of, whether it's fear or doubt, unbelief, it, it's an arrow shot out. And it's up to us to apprehend it and not allow it to take root in our soul. You see? Don't say, oh, God. Yeah, just say, I renounce this thing. You can say this. I'm, 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 I'm really battling fear. Pray with me. But I renounce it. See, don't become one with it. You see? All right. So, Lord, we are grateful for your faithfulness. Lord, we are a powerful people. Lord, we have your mind because your word says that we have the mind of Christ. We have your DNA in us. We are one with you. We, we ask you to forgive us for doubting you. We ask you to forgive us for uh, believing uh, in, in the lies of the enemy. Lord, forgive us for aligning ourselves with fear. Lord, I choose to renounce fear. If, if you're battling, it's not, don't be ashamed. Just do it. Just God wants us free. I choose to renounce fear. Fear has no hold over me. I speak to the root system of fear. Worry. Panic. Disappointment. Unforgiveness. And I say dry up in Jesus' name. I break a soul tie with fear, and I demand my freedom. He who the sun sets free is free indeed, and I apply the power of the blood of Jesus Christ over my mind, over my soul, over my body, over my family, over my health, over my workplace. In Jesus' name, and I speak to a spirit of fear, and I command it to go now, in Jesus' name. Now, just take a deep breath, because it's a spirit. I renounce the spirit of fear. I command a spirit of fear to go, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you for the power of your blood. We thank you for the blood of Jesus. We overcome by the word of our testimony and by the blood of the Lamb. Our testimony is that we're sacrificing to you. We're surrendering to you, O oh God. And we're dying to what our desires are, to our fleshly desires and submitting to you. So, Lord, we thank you for breakthrough. Now I loose the spirit of truth. So Lord, you called us to be bold as a lion. You said, fear not. Be bold and courageous. Meditate on the word day and night. Therein we will have good success and we will prosper. Lord, your desire is for us to be that, that fiery, zeal of the Lord kind of people that don't back down, that don't look to the left nor to the right, but keep moving forward. A people of power, a people of love, a people of might. That's who we are. That's who you died on the cross for, for us to be the remnant, the Gideon 300 that rise up. And don't look at what's ahead, but looks at who we believe in. So, Lord, we just thank you for a spirit of boldness and courage that you have released upon him. Because the righteous know you and we run into your name. And we know that you go before us and you're our rear guard. So, Holy Spirit, we just thank you for breakthrough. We thank you that we're protected and healthy. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Stay up here for a minute, okay? So I just felt like the Lord was talking to me while I was sitting there that um, you just witnessed a gift of faith. You know, that's a, script, that's a scriptural term. It's, a, it's, a, it's power. It's just like miracles. Uh, you can receive an impartation of the gift of faith that Trisha has. I've watched it the whole time. I've been married to her when 
uh, we first got married, she told me when her sister Anna had a prayer request, Trisha was saved, and she wanted to go over and pray for Anna, and Anna didn't want her to go. She went anyway. <laughs> when she got there, she knocked on the door, Anna opened the door and saw it was her and tried to slam the door, and she kept her foot in the door. She went in the house and said, I want to lay my hands on you and pray for you that you'll be healed. And they got into a fight. And she got her on the ground and said, I'm praying for you for your healing. OK? She's right there. She's nodding her head. She did it. That's her sister. So the next day, Anna calls Trisha and goes, you're not going to believe this. I'm healed. <laughs> OK? I'm not kidding. I, I gave you a very short version of the story. We wrestled. We didn't go on the ground, but we were hitting each other. I said, let me pray for you, you know? And she's like, no, get out of here. And I, so anyway, but see, God meets us where we're at. And she was healed of endometriosis. She called me the next day and said, you're not going to believe it. I'm like, what? So she said, she said I'm healed. I, I didn't have to have the surgery. So, yes. Now, that's a gift. I'm telling you, that's a gift. This is what the world needs right now. We need a gift of faith that's not going to take no for an answer, okay? Say this with me. Oh, no. You never let go. Through the calm and through the storm. Oh, no. You never let go. Every high and every low. Oh, no. You never let go of me. Even though, you don't have to repeat this part, but even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. So I'm just going to ask Trisha to release a prayer because this, this is something that can be imparted. It was imparted in the room today, but maybe you didn't have words for it. Now you know I receive a gift of faith today. So, Lord, we just thank you that we as your people have dunamis power. And so, Lord, I decree and declare, I release what you have imparted to me. And many here have it. Yeah. But I loose that, uh, that gift of faith, yeah. that faith that looks death in the eye and says, get out of my way. Yeah. Lord, we just loose that. I loose that gift of faith, that resurrection life power that causes the burning and the zeal of the Lord to consume us. Lord, I loose that today in Jesus' name. Amen.